This is Dr. Steve Gange from Salt Lake City, Utah with Summit Urology Group. And I'm pleased to present a review of focal therapy compared to radical prostatectomy for non-metastatic prostate cancer, a propensity score matched study recently published in Prostate Cancer and Prostate Diseases. So you can see there's a multi-center study. Data was uh, acquired prospectively. So by way of introduction, focal therapy ablates areas of prostate cancer rather than treating the whole gland. And in this study, a comparison was made between the oncological outcomes of focal therapy to radical prostatectomy. And first and foremost, this has really never been reported. There are no published RCTs for HIFU or other focal therapy modalities. Historically, RCTs for both primary HIFU and cryo versus primary HIFU and brachytherapy failed to enroll. And this occurred in a way that is not hard to understand. These patients were randomized between HIFU, which is what they wanted, and either cryo or brachy. And very often, once the randomization occurred, the patients elected to find another method to achieve their uh, outcome of HIFU. So the studies just failed to enroll. Most HIFU literature, uh, the published literature, is retrospective in design and data is expanding. And it's demonstrating safety and efficacy of HIFU in both a primary and salvage setting. A randomized controlled trial versus radical prostatectomy using any form of focal therapy might be even considered unethical given the disparity of risks and would likely suffer the same fate as the previous unsuccessful trial efforts. This is why propensity score matching is applied here. It's an established statistical method that's been used even recently in a HIFU study comparing dose escalation versus standard focal HIFU referenced here. This methodology is used to compare groups in a diverse data set and is based upon matching entry criteria between the two groups to simulate an RCT. So with respect to methods and the statistical analysis of this paper, Prospective multi-center databases of 761 patients who underwent focal therapy, the majority of whom had sonoblate HIFU and the others cryo, and 50, 572 radical prostatectomy cases over this time period. The entry criteria that allowed for propensity uh, scoring was patients must have had a PSA of less than 20, a Gleason less than or equal to four plus three with stage less than or equal to T2C. One-to-one -one propensity score matching was then used lo using uh, logistic regression for treatment uh, based upon PSA, Gleason score, T-stage, cancer core length, and use, use of neoadjuvant hormones. After accurately matching two comparative groups, 246 radical prostatectomy patients and 246 focal therapy patients, the majority of whom had HIFU, were matched to one another. It's important to note that less than 40% of the patients overall prior to matching had Gleason's 3 plus 3. So 21% of the laparoscopic radical prostatectomy patients had low stage, low grade, and 27% of the focal therapy patients. For definition of focal therapy, this included one to two sessions, and the primary outcome was failure-free survival, defined by a need for salvage, local, or systemic therapy, or the development of metastases. And with respect to failure in the radical prostatectomy group, biochemical failure was defined per ASTRO criteria. The differences in failure-free survival were determined using Kaplan-Meier analyses with log, rank, Test. And you can see the schematic of the study. After meeting inclusion exclusion criteria, the numbers were, were dropped down further. And then going through these matching variables uh, used in propensity scoring, uh, a one to one assessment using 246 patients who had lap laparoscopic radical prostatectomy and 246 patients with focal, primarily HIFU, uh, were used. Follow-up for both cohorts uh, included PSA tests for uh, the first year every three months and 
two years every six months thereafter. Patients who underwent focal therapy also underwent a multiparametric MRI at 12 months with biopsies performed if there was suspicion of residual cancer. Secondary outcomes, using a cohort where all eligible focal therapy cases and all radical prostatectomy cases uh, were included, those who underwent early adjuvant therapy uh, were used to determine failure-free survival. So this is definition number two. The definition number two for uh, failure-free survival included the need for local salvage, whole gland therapy, or systemic therapy, or diagnosis of metastases, or any repeat focal therapy, meaning two or more focal therapy sessions, or any adjuvant treatment after uh, prostatectomy. Kind of cumbersome, but you'll, you'll see the usefulness. Metastasis-free survival, MFS, and overall survival were assessed, albeit this is a short-term study. Robust attribute, attribution of cancer-specific survival was not available since we did not have access in this study to uh, review death certificates. But drilling down to the outcome, the primary outcome for definition one, failure-free survival with a 95% confidence interval in the radical prostatectomy group compared to the focal therapy groups. At three years, RP was 86% failure-free and uh, focal therapy, 91% failure-free. And you can see how this is sustained over the uh, eight-year period of follow-up, 82% versus 86% for the focal at five years, 79% for the lap for, for prostatectomies and 83% failure-free survival for focal therapy at eight years. Additional secondary outcomes uh, were assessed, biochemical and histopathological outcomes, because again, this is hard to compare when a patient still has a prostate. After matching the rate of biochemical recurrence um, in the RP group, which was 25%, the histopathological recurrence in the uh, focal therapy group was very, very similar. Again, these are the patients who at one year uh, had obtained an MRI and a biopsy based on the findings. Additional treatments, 15.9% of patients who'd had radical prostatectomy underwent salvage radiotherapy, and one of those patients died incidentally. After focal therapy, 75% required no further treatment. Those who uh, did require further treatment, the majority was simply a second focal therapy session, and a very small number of patients uh, had a third focal therapy session. Whole gland treatment was carried out in 2.8% of the focal therapy patients after a second focal therapy session failed. And that was accomplished either with radi radiation therapy in 2.4% or radical prostatectomy in simply one patient. Looking at that complicated uh, survival based upon definition two, failure-free survival by definition two following radical prostatectomy in focal therapy Again, very similar, 76% following radical prostatectomy, 82% following the focal therapy at three years. This declined uh, in both groups at five years and by eight years, 70% of patients who'd had radical prostatectomy uh, had achieved this failure-free survival situation and 63% of those who'd had focal therapy similarly. So in conclusion, a reasonable comparison has been achieved between uh, radical prostatectomy and focal therapy, and this had never been conducted or published before. Propensity scoring matching, if propensity score matching, excuse me, is an established statistical method, and you'll see it throughout our literature. This propensity score matched comparison of focal therapy and radical prostatectomy in the treatment of non-metastatic prostate cancer shows focal therapy had similar cancer control rates patients who underwent radical prostatectomy. The primary endpoint was developed as would be most relevant to a patient, so it mirrored common practice. All that said, there are some limitations. First of all, it is not a randomized controlled trial, but is a statistical method um, that has been demonstrated to simulate a randomized controlled trial where one is not feasible. Some confounding variables were not accounted for. For example, MRI, it's impossible uh, 
or, or not easy anyway, to attain cancer volume. So hard to compare an MRI to a whole amount of cross-technique pathology. There was an inability to adjust for baseline urinary and sexual function, which limited the comparison of functional outcomes in this study. So that was not, that, that was not presented. And also finally, these are only medium-term outcomes. Metastasis-free survival and overall survival would need at least 10, possibly 20 year data, which we don't have. I think this is the best data uh, comparing radical prostatectomy to focal therapy and specifically to HIFU that we've seen so far in the literature. Thank you very much.